Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one for you today. We got a lot to go over. Let's see how quick we can tuck it in. There's been another great big cyber attack, which really speaks to the narrative about switching to distributed ledger technology, blockchain as a new financial system, and a new tracking method altogether. We're going to discuss it. Huobi Exchange moves over a half a billion XRP. What in the world is going on? BNY Mellon, Standard Charter. We got news from them. XRP being used for gambling. Well, if you ever were concerned whether it was a currency or not, I think that's out of the question as far as that goes. We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more. Let's go ahead and roll that beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here. $1.6 trillion for the market cap. Let's go ahead and look at the range here right now. Let's move through this. we got a lot to cover. I want to stay real tight on this information today. So I'm sitting pretty close to a dollar flat right now, ranging between 97 cents on the low end and 104 on the higher end. Let's go ahead and get started with this news because it's a lot to cover. So here we go. Get you caught up. Distributed ledger data tracking service Whale Alert has tweeted the Chinese crypto behemoth Huobi has transferred a whopping half a billion XRP. What in the world is going on there? It says Ripple continues transferring XRP to Huobi. 900 million goes back to Ripple's escrow. We know there's the escrow release as well because this is also the first of the month it does say here meanwhile ripple the company directly associated with coin has locked almost a half a billion xrp back in escrow after releasing it from there it says 515 million xrp on the move um which is almost 530 million dollars were shifted by the biggest chinese crypto trader a total of 490 million was moved from huobi between its wallets prior to that the platform sent 25 million xrp XRP to the Binance Exchange. That is a lot of XRP, ladies and gentlemen. What is going on? I mean, I just keep seeing numbers like that and think to myself that it's hashtag relist XRP. Is that what we're about to see? Because I do believe with the, the uh, recent motion denied for the SEC and the SEC versus Ripple in the motion to compel, I do believe that uh, Ripple has a serious advantage at this point in the case. So maybe they are, in fact, but preparing for that moment we'll have to see i can only hope so looking at this right here this is really big news for flare networks and nfts first ever nft marketplace launches on flare Flare's mechanisms uh, can process up to 1,000 transactions per second, which is more than 6,500 percent more powerful than that of ethereum uh-oh <laughs> you know i mean i mean you just you can feel it right almost but but the reality is is we do know also that uh vitalik buterin has spoke about the ethereum network and the gas fees and about how they are moving towards something that can really reduce the uh gas fees uh by a lot so i think that's good so we're seeing competition come from the side of flare networks we're also going to see it in the coming days and months from cardano Right. We're, we're, and, and we know that Ethereum is working on the other side to stay in, uh, competitive when it comes to the cost of gas fees for transactions. So this gets good all the way around. And besides, I'm a huge fan of NFTs. So this is enormous, too, to have the first ever marketplace launch off of Flare. Flare is supposed to launch sometime later this month is the uh, give or take two to four weeks is the last thing I heard. So very excited to see all of this jump off. Let's go ahead and keep going. There's so much more to see today. SEC loses bid for Ripple legal docs in 1.38 billion XRP battle. And this is what I was just highlighting that, you know, this brings Ripple much closer to uh, getting a settlement, I believe, because this makes it very difficult for the SEC to fight the fair notice defense that Ripple is, in fact, using. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I think we're all caught up on it. But I do want to point out, Rick's bank governor sees good reason to believe regulation for crypto will happen sooner rather than later. And basically, he goes through the idea of understanding here that Sweden's government is in the process of tightening standards for cryptocurrency exchanges. Lynn Hagen said, but 
uh, labeled this is a work in progress at the international level. That's been the issue. We see countries like Singapore and Sweden really be forward thinking in this way, but then many other areas around the world, U.S. included, uh, have yet to uh, follow suit. So it's on the international level keeping pace, and that's why I'm excited about the June 11th through the 13th, 47th G7 meeting. I think they're going to address some of these things and hopefully begin to move the ball collectively together on the international level. Coming back to just the country-to-country level, though, the CBDC for Ghana, the Bank of Ghana, is in the implementation phase. This is exciting. Now, they're not a big country. Now, to highlight this from this as well from the uh, Rick's Bank here is that uh, China and Sweden are currently the only major major countries who have uh, been in plans of actually piloting and test of, testing the actual CBDCs in that later phase, where we see like Bank of Ghana and then obviously the Central Bank of Bahamas, the Bahamian sand dollar have already been launched. So that's a pretty interesting thing to note there. So rolling here, uh, it keeps getting better because this is about the new financial world that we're moving to, and it's going to have these major implications for countries like Africa. Africa is going digital, and the reality is is I believe it will have massive implications for that country. And look, I think this goes to speak to the larger side of what I've said a million times on this channel. We are witnessing the greatest financial paradigm shift in the history of mankind. It cannot be overstated. And I believe countries like Africa are going to have the ability over the next few decades to really leapfrog because of this technology, to really get into a place where they can compete as, as a continent and a country with the rest of the world the way the superpowers do today. I really do believe that. All right, looking right here. The Cryptic Poet says green debt card tread selects Ripple partner Neom as a card issuance partner. This is crypt up Cryptic Poet. Thank you, Cryptic Poet. Uh, this look right here, you can see UK-based green fintech tread has selected global B2B payments company Neom to be its card issuance partner for its new sustainable product. And this is all about really going green, the green agenda. All of this ties in. And that's why when it comes to proof of work, tokens like Bitcoin, you know, you know, something has to change. I don't believe that Chris Larson came out and said that Bitcoin needs to switch from proof of work to proof of stake just to hear his own voice. I believe that that's going to become more real than people ever imagined in the coming months. I really do believe that. And I believe it'll come from the incentive of regulation. And one of the other things that I'm excited about is with the launch of uh, Flare Networks and Flare Finance, you know, I've been saying this here on the channel. We see the utility forks of Bitcoin. We see Dogecoin and Litecoin already offered as F assets on the network. Have they been holding back FBTC so they could announce it just before the launch of Flare Networks? And wouldn't that be a hell of an impact to show that, wow, now that you could stake that Bitcoin, that's such a problem with energy consumption on a network like Flare Networks? Just a thought. Here's another thought, but it ain't a thought, it's a thing. BNY Mellon launches crypto custody services in Ireland. BNY Mellon is a huge Ripple partner and obviously a huge bank and has a lots and lots of money. Probably, I think it's multiple trillions of dollars under assets and management. I should have looked it up for us, but I forget. I've looked up before, but it might be five or six trillion. I can't remember. But nevertheless, an enormous bank with huge ties to Ripple is already starting to begin to offer cryptocurrencies to their clients. This thing just keeps getting bigger, and so does this. Standard Chartered, where Kahina Van Dyke, who used to work at Facebook and then went to Ripple and then landed here at Standard Chartered, it says that, uh, well, she doesn't say it, but she's there, and we recognize that about her, and to create a joint venture to buy and sell crypto. This is just days after top rival HSBC gives the market a pass. Anybody else picking up on a theme here? <laughs> The giant investment banks of the world are sick of watching their clients go to other exchanges and buy what they have not offered. That is about to end. 
And if you're not seeing that out of this, that is the hope that I have for you to see, because that's why I've laid this out in this manner. Because we know J.P. Morgan's doing it. We know Goldman Sachs is doing it. Standard Charter's doing it. HSBC's doing it. Hell, everybody's doing it, right? And it is because they don't want to see their own customer base go to these other places to get these assets. Here we see from James Rule XRP, XRP for gambling looks like a currency to me. I couldn't agree more, James. It sure does. It says that these cryptos are being used for online gambling. If I go into this, just listen to these numbers here. It's pretty staggering when I got, on, got into it here. Let me see if I can find this. International law enforcement and anti-money laundering bodies have highlighted that blockchain and cryptocurrencies facilitate illicit activities, including illegal betting and money laundering. The ARF in, uh, said in its quarterly bulletin report that it added figures were a sevenfold increase since 2018. And... The ARF is the Asian Racing Federation, and they said the acceptance of top cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP on gambling sites are part of the reason why illegal online gambling is rising in Asia. And this, to me, builds more and more of a narrative in my eyes that we're going to see regulation come down the pipe here. And it also speaks to the idea, what about casino coin? Is it just the perfect example of if we have governance and compliance built into the token and the network doesn't it make sense to have something like casino coin used here and people can convert their cash and their digital assets into casino coin and participate on these online platforms it's just a thought just a thought all right so here we go here we know the call to action has been made by gary gensler to congress to assist in helping to bring the right regulation for crypto exchanges when it comes to investor protection. And I wanted to start with that so we could set the tone. So what have we seen to celebrate that narrative, right? To highlight that this narrative has to be dealt with. It started with the GameStop issue, right? We saw the GameStop issue where they, instead of talking about the greediest banks in the world and greediest Wall Street investors, institutional level investors, investors in the world. Oh no, they don't want to bring them up. They talk about the retail investor using social media to create market manipulation. That's what they talked about. And they basically talked about how market manipulation can't be had at that level. And that's why we're going to need some kind of new system that speaks to distributed ledger technology and blockchain, right? And also tokenizing uh, the general markets, right? The derivative markets. Then we saw what after that? After that, we saw the U.S. pipeline get hacked by a cyber attack. Again, speaking to the infrastructure is antiquated and it needs to be updated, right? Which means move to a distributed ledger technology blockchain type system, right? Then the narrative continued here. Now we see this this morning from Michael Val Five Links. Yes, the world's largest meat supplier has shut down all of its U.S. beef plants in the wake of a cyber attack. JBS USA is the recent victim of the most uh, uh, horrible cyber attacks here. Now, all of this is speaking to a few things that again speaks to the narrative, just like the attack on the pipeline, the market infrastructure needs to be updated. It's antiquated. We need to switch to a new system. That's the narrative I'm seeing here. The other narrative is they've, we've seen the, uh, pipelines attacked and the gas prices go up. We just saw the meat supplier get attacked. So now the food's going to go up, right? We know that the housing market's going to go up because we know that the, the lumber industry has been hit in some way. Uh, and that, that might, and I don't know what the real reason why that's actually doubled. Maybe it's because of the block in the Suez Canal. I have no idea what the hell it is, but, but the point is, is it sounds more like to me, they're creating a narrative to move to a new system, but they're also really, pricing in hyperinflation the food goes up the gas goes up housing goes up hello the dollar's worth less congratulations then we move here because i want to remind everybody there's another angle to all of this and it's the diem stable coin which is recently uh you know, um, stopped and or actually not stopped, but abandoned their plans to secure payment licensure in Switzerland from their uh, regulatory watchdog. And they have moved back to the operate the operations in the United States and have partnered with crypto friendly bank Silvergate Bank 
to be the reserve holder for their stable coin, U.S. dollar backed stable coin. A reminder right now that Silvergate Bank is owned by Barry Silbert from Digital Currency Group and Grayscale Investment Fund. How little this world can really get, right? This is all very interesting stuff. You know, when you think about the infrastructure and everything that's going on and all the attacks that have been made, listen to Mark Carney, the former governor of the Bank of England, and what he says. The central banks know that by working together, we can build a more resilient financial system, one that's more resilient, for example, for uh, to cyber attacks. To cyber attacks. Isn't that what we just talked about? There's the narrative, right? Now we need to move to a different system. Now he's talking about central banks building a more resilient financial system. Well, we don't even need to hear anything else from Mark Carney, and he's wonderful. But the reality is, that's right. Central banks are working on a new system. It's the private ledger right? That's built on top of the XRP Ledger open source technology. That's going to do it for me. This is where the world's going. Everything runs on XRP or a fork thereof. It. So it might be Flair instead, but that's okay with me because I'm invested in both, not financial advice, just telling you what I'm doing. And right here, before we get out of here, here's something else I like doing too. It's linked to Private Investing Made Simple, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the products on this platform. Link 2's up here. Kraken's up here. Uphold and many, many, many others. Make sure you check it out and try to register and see if you're accredited. You never know. You just may be. I'll catch all of you on the next one. Make sure you check out the links in the description and the comment box. They are trusted, vetted links. Be careful what you, you click on out here because I tell you what, you just never know. A lot of scamming activity. Head on a swivel. It's crypto. I'll catch all of you in the next one.